Galma was started in, in uh, 1990 as a band. We got our name and we started rehearsing, but I guess you can say that it was all starting with me and Gotten and Emma meeting at fillers camps in Sweden in the late 80s. Um, that's where we actually got this whole interest started in, in the folk music. When we started the band, we met with uh, Rickard. Um, it was me, Gotten and Rickard who went to play in, uh, in Gävle, middle part of Sweden to see a performance of uh, Hamlet, and uh, it just struck us how amazing this music was. So actually later the same, not the same day, but the day after we actually got together and, and started playing with some fake instruments that we had. I used my violin, Gotti didn't have any instrument at all, so he got his dad's banjo, so he tuned down one up so he would have a drone banjo. Not really, uh, how it sounds today, but uh, that was a really rough start. Uh, Rickard played on his classical guitar and it sounded just awful. But uh, all things started from there and uh, we had a lot of fun and we, we made tunes. And then in 1992, Jens joined the band. I guess from there we're it really started to happen more things um, with the style of the band. And uh, we got a record contract deal in, well, in 1992, and we started recording a demo for that. And, and uh, at that time we asked Emma if she wanted to join for guest vocals on, on the first record. And no, she didn't really want to do that. She was young and shy and didn't want to stand in a studio singing in a microphone. But, she did, and uh, it turned out fine. And, and after that, she was also part of the band, although she denied it for like six months. But <laughs> so that was the first album that came out, uh, the self-entitled Garmana, uh, released in Sweden in started on the second album pretty fast, Vittrad. And uh, by that time we were more focused on what we wanted to do. We knew we had been in the studio before. Emma was part of the band. She had a lot, she had more songs to contribute and, and uh, we had better ideas how to do it. And, and we had a better studio to be in. And, uh, so we started to record Vittrad in, in 1993. So that was a really fun recording and it was uh, the first time we started to use uh, electronic instruments. Uh, I grew up listening to electronic music. It was uh, uh, a lot of German music. Uh, Einstein and Obaud and Depeche Mode and Kraftwerk and all that stuff. But I was really, that's actually my, that's what I, what's got me started and that's the first music I, st I started to do as well was electronic music in the middle of the 80s. The strength of this band I think is, is that we uh, successfully have, have incorporated what we enjoy in music and have, have succeeded to maybe uh, use the different touching points that each genre, uh, genre had. Like, um, like from, from the rock music, from electronic music, from folk music and um, I mean even from classical and country music, it's, it's in there somehow and uh, uh, on Vitrad we started to a little bit touch on that, but not to, it was more as a, we had a fun time doing it.
when it came to doing the next album, Gals Musicians, we had, uh, we had a different view already on the music and what we were. It started to become more and more clearly. So uh, that was a really made important record to do for us. Vänner och fränder i lade om råd Hur det skulle gifta bort sin fränka i år Ut i rosen lade om råd Hur det skulle gifta bort sin fränka i år Of course, it was important that we used Sank for the first time uh, on, on, as a producer. He had mainly been, been doing industrial rock before that in Sweden and um, really heavy, heavy rock and roll music. Gals Musician is more, uh, uh, more than Vitra, it's a, a straightforward live recording album. sort of a platform for us to stand on for the future. In 95, 96, I, I, I got my own stuff and I started to do demos at home and it, that just changed everything. So much more music came out <laughs> and uh, it became more interesting and it became, uh, just everything about it made more sense, both uh, in an aesthetic 
way of thinking about music too. I think with Vengeance, it was uh, uh, we really had a, 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 a very strong uh, opinion about what we wanted it to be like. <laughs> we wanted it to be groundbreaking. We're going to record an old ballad that we had uh, uh, recorded on our first album, uh, and that song is called Herr Olof. And uh, Stefan did a beat to this song, and uh, well, we knew we were going to do this song and uh, the ballad, but it never really fitted. But uh, the backbeat were so good that that we had to use it in some way. And then we, we borrowed a small piece from Hildegard's Eukari and made it a refrain. And then we sat, and we've never done a song in this way before. Then we sat and just tried to do a song <laughs> and tried to find nice words. And then we borrowed some Swedish, some words from the Swedish translation of one of her other songs and we made that a verse. So actually we have been borrowing words from two of her songs, but only melody from Eukari. 
solens varme dröp i dig Som doften av balsam Solens varme dröp i mig Som doften av balsam Allt som rör sig andas lugnt Driver över marken Solens varme dröp i dig Som doften av balsam That's, that's a recording. I have a, I had a lot of memories from it, and it was a lot of emotions on, on, on involved in, in recording that didn't necessarily were there on any other album. It feels like the, uh, a, a more uh, personal record for a lot of us than any, any, anything else. There was a lot of things happening with, with, uh, with the members in the band and, and the situations, and it was. Uh, I remember it, especially in the in the ending. It was uh, really a tough uh, period, and everyone was sort of depressed and, and sad a lot of the times. Actually, during the Vengeance recordings, we started with the Bingham album. This project uh, started as a request uh, from. Uh, some people who were wanted us to do a tour with Hild music by Hildegard von Bingen. They had heard her music and uh, they thought that it would fit Germana really well. Uh, so they gave us the material, uh, CDs with the choirs and other people playing her music and, and uh, we listened to it and we said, okay, okay we'll do this. Emma had the songs, the, the, the vocal tunes of, of this really old material written by Hildegard von Bingen who was uh, living in Germany in the 11th, no, 12th century. Uh, and um, that has nothing to do with, with the music 
language that we know about today. Hildegard music is so much harder to learn because it's really strange and difficult melodies, especially for me who who has only been singing folk music all my life. What's that? You uh, Emma, stop. What, what's that? <laughs> It is still her tunes, notes, I mean, and melodies, but sometimes we have to push a little in one place or make it longer because we want it to fit with our music. <laughs> I knew nothing about Hildegard von Bingen when we got this uh, request. I had never heard her name actually. Uh, so I went to the library and I borrowed some books because I wanted to know what, what, am, I, what am I doing here? <laughs> who is this woman who lived a thousand years ago? And uh, I just realized that this was such an amazing person. She had done so much more than just writing songs. She wrote music, she wrote poems, she wrote... Uh, she did, she did uh, invent uh, the ideas of how we build churches nowadays out of uh, an acoustic viewpoint. Uh, she wrote down her visions uh, that she said came from God and uh, she, ha she wrote down recipes of medical herbs. She had recipes of food that were good for your body and not good. She has written down what you should eat. She just did pretty much everything and she was a, a, a quite powerful woman and known as the first feminist is uh, in a in a period that was not really allowing women to do anything at all. And she had a, a, a quite strong position. So uh, she's, a, she's a very remarkable woman from, from Germany uh, from 900 years ago.